Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome to the next lesson in the SFML tutorial series. And in this lesson, we're going to look at a little Hello World application and describe exactly what's going on, as well as get an understanding of how to use the documentation in SFML. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So you can see that I have my little application running here. I've changed a few things, and that's going to be part of your homework to also change a few things about the default Hello World application. So just as a refresher, last time you probably went to learn tutorials and the SFML Linux tutorial and copied this code here for just making sure that you could set up SFML. If for some reason you are having problems, please check out some of the earlier videos in the series for how to either compile from source or just compile one of the pre-built binaries for the library. So with that said, though, where I want to take us today is not the tutorial, but actually to go back to learn and the API documentation so we can understand a little bit more about what's going on in the SFML library. So what I'm going to go ahead and do on the left side of the screen is open up our application here. I've written a few comments and I'm just going to talk through what I'm going to be showing you in the uh, or rather what I'm going to be describing with the hello world. Uh, tutorial here. So that's just some notes on how to compile. And the first thing to look at, though, is, well, the start of the program where we're including the graphics module here. Now, just as far as navigating the documentation and trying to figure out where to start, you can start by just clicking on the modules and SFML is divided up into these five main modules here. So let's go ahead and we've included the graphics module. I'll click on graphics module and we'll see some of the various things related to graphics here. So let's go ahead into the entry point of our program, our main, and we'll go ahead and see the first things that we are doing here. So setting up a window or a render window, creating our shape and changing some properties of the shape. OK, so let's go ahead and take these one at a time and go to the drawing board here. So the sort of overall setup of most of our SFML applications are going to be broken up into really three parts here. And I'm going to just break them up here. One, we have our setup. That is things like setting up our window, any shapes that we're going to draw. Two is our loop or our application loop. For most folks, this is probably going to be the game loop uh, if you're building a game. Otherwise, in general, it's just the application loop. And then we have cleanup at the very end. So this is after your program uh, has exited the loop and is just going to eventually terminate the application. OK, so part of this setup here, we have things like, for instance, setting up our window, any shapes that we have here. So let's go ahead and take a look at those in the documentation. All right. So again, just navigating the uh, different um, parts here where we have the window and the circle shape, you can actually just search the different classes here. Uh, that's one way to do this. So in the bottom left corner of my screen, I'm just searching render window here. And you can go ahead and click on it and see some of the different properties here. Now, there are things like different video modes that you can query for, but for the most part, this is just setting up a 400 pixel wide by 400 pixel high window and then setting the title here. And that's really all that we have to worry about in regards to setting up the window. Most of our applications are, in fact, going to have a window or something that we want to display. So that's really all that I want to say about that. I'll revisit the window and what's going on in a moment, though. But let's go ahead and look at this circle shape here. And I'll go ahead and search for it in another way, since I know it's part of the uh, graphics module. So I'll go to modules, graphics. And if I search through all these classes, they're nicely organized. I can find circle shape here. So I'll click on it. Now, notice there is a hierarchy here of um, how circle shape is set up in, in the object oriented sense. It's inheriting from shape. So the shape class, you get all the power to set the color that you fill in the circle, the outline, the thickness of the borders, and so on. But some of these specific properties of, say, circle shape versus convex shape or rectangle, so I'll click back on circle shape here, are things like getting or setting the radius, which makes sense. But otherwise, it's important to know that it's just one of our drawable or renderable things that we can draw to the screen. And that makes sense. If you call circle shape, you want to draw a circle on your window, uh, as we have done. So that's the idea of our setup here and setting up one of the shapes. 
Now, as part of your homework to exercise uh, your understanding of SFML, go ahead and try to create a rectangle shape or perhaps this convex shape uh, and draw that to your screen and try to change some of the different properties of each of them. All right, so now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and look at this next line here, which is this while statement while window is open. And this brings us into our application loop. And this is the infinite loop that's going to be running over and over and over. Well, as long as our window is open, right? This is an infinite loop. And usually we're doing three things here in our application loop. The first thing being that we are handling uh, input from the user. And that could be things like pressing a mouse key, uh, clicking on the uh, key on the keyboard, um, or even interacting with the window, clicking inside the window or clicking outside of them. Those are all different events that could be occurring. And then we'll handle updates that might have been a result of those events. And then we display or render our actual application. So that would be things like the actual circle shape. So let's go ahead and break this down here. So since the first thing that we're going to be doing is handling events, the way that SML handles this is we create an event object. And this is essentially an object that's going to store different events that happen. So let me go ahead and just highlight what that means here in event. And again, that's going to store what the event was. Was it a mouse click? Was it a keyboard, etc. These different types of events here. And then what SFML does is it takes these events here and it puts them into a queue data structure or some sort of data structure where it can pull for those events and handle whatever the first event is on that queue. And then maybe the next one, the next one, the next one. And this sort of makes sense that it would handle it in this way. So you could imagine jamming your hands on the keyboard, pressing a bunch of keys, and there must be some order that they have to be handled. So that's the general idea of an event-driven uh, programming model where you handle events, put them on some sort of queue, and then handle them in some deterministic order. We could dive into the source code of SFML if we truly want to see the internals, but this should give us a good enough idea of what's going on. There are other ways in SFML, which I'll show, of just handling directly mouse clicks and keyboard presses using just if statements, and we'll look at those as well. So just to show an example event that we can handle here, so we've sort of got this loop within a loop here, which again might be a little bit strange. Let me properly indent that. Let me go ahead and run this program, and I'll go ahead and execute it. And what I'm going to be looking out for is handling the different event types. Remember, that was this object here, and I said there could be different types of events. Mouse ones, keyboard ones, or just handling other general events like closing the window. So let's go ahead and run this, and I'll click on the X, and you'll see that we've handled that event where the window closes. Okay, so this is the general idea here. Now, once we've done this, we're essentially done with the input step. Next, we would do any sort of updates. Again, that might be a result of the events that took place or just general updates that you would want to happen every frame. And then finally, outside of our event loop, we get into handling the different rendering functions. Now, the way you could think about this third part in our application loop as the display and render as an artist quickly drawing over a page and then erasing the page and then drawing again and then displaying that page to you. And they would continuously repeat this process. They would erase the page, draw a bunch of things on it, show it to you, then erase the page, draw a bunch of things, show it to you, etc., etc. So essentially what's going on, again, is we're clearing the page. It's the artist erasing the page. And then they're drawing a bunch of shapes on the page here. That would be our circle shape that we're directly saying, hey, draw on this window. And then finally displaying everything that's been drawn to the window when we're ready to do that. And usually we have this sort of form. Again, clearing, drawing, and then displaying. Now, we could have some other data structures in the future that can take care of just drawing all of our drawable shapes and these kind of things, but that could be for a future lesson or for you to improve on. All right, so then we finally reach the cleanup state, which happens if we um, exit our application loop, where we're essentially just returning, maybe reclaiming any memory or otherwise deleting any resource. 
or closing files or these types of things. And that's basically it. That's the Hello World application. So I'll go ahead and run it one more time as we close out here. All right, folks, so there you have it. And your homework is going to be to create some different shapes, whether they're rectangle shapes or convex shapes, and then drawing those in the appropriate place so that you can see all three or however many that you decide to draw shapes on your window. I hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure that you like and subscribe and continue on to the next video where I'll show you some more of the basics of SFML.